All right, we are in Revelation chapter 13, and <clears throat> let's read, uh, well, let's read verse 4. And they worshiped the dragon who gave power unto the beast, and they worshiped the beast, saying, Who is like the beast? Who is able to make war? Now drop down to verse 11 and 12. <clears throat> and I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns uh, like a lamb, and he spoke like a dragon, and he exercised all the power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and them that dwell, who dwell in on it, to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. And then verse 15, notice where it's all of the worshiping of the beast. <clears throat> verse 15, and he hath power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that of as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and enslaved, to receive a mark on in their right hand or in their forehead. <clears throat> All right, so I'll just read this since I didn't read much last time. Why would people worship the beast? Because through him you can buy and trade and therefore not die. <clears throat> and then I put enlargement is chosen over death. In other words, to, to gain to have what you want you would some people would say to have what you need but to have what you want enlargement is better just as a principle enlargement is better to most people than selflessly giving yourself <clears throat> uh, of course they follow the beast they chose his way long before he ever appeared I want you to think about that. They chose the way of the beast long before he ever appeared and started ruling over. Um, <clears throat> for example, we are given a good question in Revelation 13, 3 and 4. And I saw one of the beasts, uh, one of his heads as though it were wounded to death, wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed in all the world wondered after the beast, and they worshiped the dragon who gave power unto the beast, and they worshiped the beast, and said, who is like the beast? Who is able to make war with him? <clears throat> How can you make war against something you are in agreement with? You know, you already think that way. You just haven't had the full power of it uh, manifested to you. Uh, why fight against it? When the people look at the alternative, they see that the beast is making war, conquering and killing lambs. Also, another reason why they would worship him, apparently he was struck <clears throat> with a sword and should have died but didn't. Okay, so this is, they all wonder at this. He should have died but he didn't. See, the lamb should have died, and he did. And I, I covered this in the last Revelation class where I went over this extensively. But, um, but his glory was that he didn't die, he got healed. And Jesus' glory was that he did die, and we got healed. <clears throat> uh, but long, let's see. But long before forcing people to do his will, they were already taken with his indestructibility and his ways. They wondered at this. They were taken with his indestructibility. What, what is the, is this on video? It's just Ben. Oh, okay. Well, Ben, she looked really spooky coming up. She didn't just walk up and set it down. She goes. That was weird. Sorry. Is this a serpent <laughs> slinking up here? <laughs> right. <clears throat> All right. Um, you know, it says right here that they, uh, and all the world wondered after the beast, and it says that in relationship to 
his indestructibility. He didn't die. He was struck with a sword. He was struck wounded unto death, it says, but he didn't die. And everything that's incredible and, and powerful to them, see, this is before the beast showed up, much less with the wound. They were already worshiping strength and might and not weakness and, and selfless giving. They were already worshiping strength and might and indestructibility and this, this, uh, uh, these ways. Uh, and I've talked about this many times. So, you know, these movies, they know how to, how to suck in the men and they know how to suck in the women. You know, they know the formula. And the men, it is almost always that they're mistreated and they do somebody kills their wife or family or something and they get angry and they go you know kill them all um gosh i could i wish i could remember the story that sandy told there was some story that she was telling us and this is my sister <clears throat> she said that um uh that there was uh Oh, some people mistreated their his wife or something, and and uh, so uh, she ended up dying, and so she and he ended up building the biggest monument in the graveyard with a monument of her on a horse or something. Oh, it was taller and everything, overlooking everybody, and that was getting back at them. And they used a symbol on there. And the symbols in Sandy Sand, and the symbol represented uh, love, hope, and peace. And she said, I can't remember the other one. I said, revenge. <laughs> she laughed and said, yeah, I guess, I guess so. You know, it's this thing of revenge, you know, and getting, getting you know, uh, when we're unjustly treated, you know, and it's usually got to be, uh, see, it says vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. But in the movies, we don't want the Lord to repay. We want that person to kill everybody. And, da -da -da -da. and that, that, you know, gets our blood to boil. And then the women, you know, it's always some love story and the, you know, and all of the ups and downs, but then, <laughs> you know, whatever, you know what it is. Uh, I think Ben is calling. <laughs> is that, does this mean he's calling? Uh, did we lose him? Okay. He hates to hear this part about, <laughs> about Braveheart and that it's not really, <laughs> he hates that. All right. Um, <clears throat> They admire strength and they admire power. And that's, that's Revelation 12 and that's Revelation 14. <clears throat> they don't follow him merely because of food. Because if you look at and here's the deal, we have to go by the scripture. They're, it's not primarily because of they can buy and sell, it's because of this wound and that he got the victory over it and that he's now conquering everything. <clears throat> so, um, they don't follow him merely because of uh, food or material goods, but it always mentioned his healed wound. The thing that they admired early on becomes the thing that puts them in bondage later. The thing that they admired before the beast took control, before he you know, started lording over everything, they, they already had innate tendencies to admire strength and, and all of these things, power and um, <clears throat> that sort of thing. So I'm going to read that again. The thing that they admired early on becomes the thing that puts them in bondage later when the beast is there. Jesus was raised from the dead, not just saved from death. See, the beast was saved from death. Jesus was raised from the dead by God, not by himself. He used his resurrection for others, not for personal power and control, which is what the beast is doing. All right. So, um, uh, it, so it talks about both the lamb, followers of the lamb and followers of the beast, that they received the mark or the, the uh, seal in their forehead or in their hands, in their right hand. 
So I'm going to read out of Deuteronomy 6, uh, and I'm going to read out of the NIV, so you just listen. <clears throat> These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit down at home and when you walk along the road and when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. <laughs> so I wrote, when we haven't fastened his word into our minds and actions, our hands, our minds and actions, then we follow the thinking and ways of the beast. They should have been, uh, uh, been on our doorposts and on our gates. These things should have been written on our doorposts and on our gates, but because they were not, we let something else in. But it is not just God's word as in Deuteronomy, but the mindset of the lamb. His followers have it. <clears throat> that the, the being sealed by him is in Revelation 7, verse 3 and 4. All right, so let's talk a little more about the difference between uh, the beast and the lamb, and this would be a good title for this section here, the difference between the beast and the lamb. Um, again, verse 17, and that no man might buy or sell except he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. <clears throat> like Jesus, the beast saves because it looks like he's saving them because he's, he's letting them buy and sell and he's making that available to everybody. <clears throat> but unlike Jesus, the beast does it with power. He will not allow them to buy and sell uh, unless we would worship him. He forces servitude. He forces his mark with fear of being cut off. So then I, I make this statement. So what is Antichrist about him? Now I want you to think about that statement um, because I think that maybe we really don't grasp what it, what, you, you remember John talks about that in 1st John and in 2nd and 3rd John. There are antichrists among us, you know. <clears throat> um, so what is antichrist about the antichrist, the beast? Not just that he is against Christ, which is what, that's our usual thing. He's against Christ, so he's antichrist. That's our thinking, okay? <clears throat> Not just that he is against Christ, but the main thing that shows him as Antichrist is that his ways are so anti the way of the Lamb. That's Antichrist to him, to, to the Lord. If you follow the Lamb, you will not worship the beast, for you will see the difference. And John talks about there are many Antichrists that are now in the world. Have we ever seen one? Would we know what one is? No, we wouldn't, because we would, we would be, we would be looking for someone uh, who is, you know, I am totally against Jesus. Not even religion. I am totally against Jesus. I hate Jesus. Or, or we would be looking for um, something that is, um, I don't know, something that is. Uh, has intentions against him. But what if, what if he's referring to just the nature of the beast? Because he is the beast. The, the beast is the Antichrist. See, it's not the, it's not the anti-Jesus. It's not the Antichrist is the beast. You know, the beast is the Antichrist. And he's introduced as that. Uh, in that manner. The beast is the main one that's, that's shown, and he, then he's shown to be Antichrist. <clears throat> and so, um, you know, just like the devil. Well, I, I can spot the devil, man. You know, he's got horns and a red suit and a red tail and a pitchfork, you know. No, no, he's, he's, he's among us and doing stuff all the time, and we may not recognize it. 
So how, if we were, because in John's day, whatever was is in our day too. So if we were in John's day and John said, there are many antichrists that are coming to the world, would we be able to go, that's antichrist right there? Or would we, be, would we be able to truly identify it because that is Antichrist? Or would we point to something over here that was like a, a distraction to get us to think that that's, this is the, what's the real issue? Is this guy's just saying, I hate Jesus and stuff like that. And, you know, I mean, on, I'm just going to say this. Honestly, that guy could just have some mental problems. You know what I mean? I mean, he could just be over there. I mean, just standing there with the side, I hate Jesus, you know, and just have some mental situation, maybe even demon possessed, but that's de demon possessed is not necessarily antichrist. So, <clears throat> anyway, just some thoughts that I've had. Um, in Revelation, I cannot find where the beast is making war with others. When they say, Who is like the beast and who can make war against it? they're gloating that the followers of the Lamb are weak. That's what they're gloating. Because the only one that we see going against the beast, we don't see a war. We don't see a bunch of wars in that sense. <clears throat> we only see this one war that's going on and it's being raged by the beast against the lambs or against the nature of Christ in us. <clears throat> Um, they, so who is like the beast and who can make war against him? They're gloating that the followers of the Lamb are weak and will never defeat this powerful beast. And you know what? They're right. They're right. They're not supposed to defeat it. Little do the inhabitants of the earth realize that it is God who has allowed the beast to make war against his own and to defeat them. So I'm a Christian, and I believe that we're supposed to, you know, stomp on the devil's head, and we're supposed to have victory over the enemy on every front. Uh, and I, let me tell you, I believe in, you know, in my name you should cast out the devil. I believe in that. I believe in deliverance. I believe that God can, you know, cast a demon out of somebody. But he, while, while he can cast a demon out of somebody, he can't cast the lamb inside of us. He has to be formed. And you're not going to get that. I mean, one reason why most Christians, particularly in the United States, will never really fully conform to the Lamb is there are no circumstances here enough to really, really put you in a situation where you, on a, on a, through, a, through, let's just say through the tribulation, your tribulation, through the tribulation, that you, you are choosing lamb at every front and being with the Lord. Now, I can't, I can't even describe that to you uh, the way that I see it. But it's too easy here. Things are too nice. There's not enough pressure on us. There's not to really, really get into a situation where I'm going with the lamb. I know we do that. All of us do that on a regular basis. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying... I'm not even talking about us per se. I'm just saying that uh, to get in a situation where everything is contrary to ourself and would make self scream, but we say, you know what? I'd rather be with you, Jesus, and I don't care. Not, I mean, I don't care in the sense that my care is you and others. And so this is, this is my path, and I choose that. And so it's almost ridiculous for me to, to say that, but I just believe that right now in the condition of this country, um, you know, maybe if there's a genuine heart turning to the Lord, there'd have to be some things get worse, not better. And everybody thinks everything has to get better. You know, that's why we go, oh, no, you know, I, I you know, what was it? Oh, I, no, I don't want Obama to be president. Oh, no, it's going to be bad and everything. Well, you thought that was bad. <laughs> you know, and it can get way worse. But, but God called Nebuchadnezzar my servant, my right hand. My right hand. This is my servant. My son. Well, this, is, this, is, this is his use, you know. 
that he uses troubles and trials. They are workers for us, and we're fighters against them. We'll never be conformed to the Lamb with that mentality. We can't. It's impossible. It's impossible. Um, <clears throat> So what, so, so what is one of the conclusions we can come to? <clears throat> well, the Christians that don't conform to the lamb, they're da-da-da-da-da-da, or whatever, all this kind of stuff. Jesus was the only lamb, and he died for all of them. Mm -hmm. if, if you're a lamb and with the lamb, then your role is to die for them, not condemn them. That's it. That's right. Because this is always about selfless giving. We're not supposed to be become something, you know. I've been talking about it a lot, just to, even within my own being. This thing that the the lower seat, you know, it says, well, you know, take the lower seat and stuff. And and I've been calling it in my heart uh, the king seat. Take the king seat, the lower seat, the Lamb of God. Take the king seat. But we, we don't. We, we I don't want the lower seat. I and I want him to say, come up here. But you see. You see, the, the truth is, in his spirit, in his nature, that is his seat. The lower seat really is his seat. And, and, uh, and so we don't go and sit in that seat and sit down in the lowest seat and say, thank you, Lord, that I would be granted to sit in your seat, the one that you would have chosen, and that I can take my place with you in your throne, which is the lower seat. Thank you. And to really have that heart of, of this is one of the highest privileges I could be brought to. Uh, our views are all wrong because our, our ethics, our way of thinking, our mindsets are all wrong because we want to get higher, we want to get better. We, want, we don't want to get lower. You know, I want to. I you know, I want to sit on your right hand and your left, and I want everybody out there to go. Look, look, those are the ones Jesus chose, and they're so special to Him, and and the and you can see it and everything, and yet, and yet the bride. What does it say about her? She's coming down from that glory into the earth. She has a different heart. She has His heart, just like He came down. She's with Him in that. She loves, she loves him, therefore she loves that. Can you see that? Because those can't be separated. That can't be separated. The lower seat and the lamb cannot be separated. They're one and the same in, that, in spirit. <clears throat> anyway, there's, there's just the, the difference between the beast and the lamb. It's incredible. <clears throat> um, So um, God has allowed the beast to make war against his own and defeat them. The one who is truly powerful and works all things after the counsel of his will is God. That's Ephesians 1.11. That God works all things. All things. Do we believe that? All things after the counsel of his will. This is his counsel. This is the way he counsels. This is the way he views things. And, uh, and, and he's in control of that. And here's the thing that's weird. I mean, honestly, if you think about it, <clears throat> he, when everything's going right and we're looking good to everybody and all this stuff, it, it's almost like he's more in control of humbling us so that we can be with him. Do you understand? So that we can be with him then walking around and with our nose up thinking that we're something special and then maybe in the process looking down on others. But we're always praying for that or looking for that or, or thinking that he's going to, you know, God's going to see how special I am and he's going to exalt me. Well, what if God saw how special your heart really was and would be for him if nurtured and that you would be with him in a hidden place, in in a hidden place. What about that, that hidden place that's so special? Hallelujah. The hiddenness. You, for you're dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. Praise God. Praise God. If the dragon cannot kill you, then the beast will devise ways to rule over the living. 
If he can't kill you, he'll find a way to rule over the living. One situation follows the other. Israel had to submit to Rome as a power or as a religion or they would be put to death. <clears throat> so then uh, also verse 9 and 10, if any man have an ear to hear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword shall be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. So I wrote down, someone might say, but he is so strong, talking about the beast, you know, because he can kill with the sword, because we only see him killing lambs. I mean, really, are you really that, are you really that strong that you can defeat lambs? <laughs> but I wrote, someone might say of the beast, he is so strong, he can make... He can make fire fall from heaven. You remember that? It says that. It's uh, verse 13. And he doeth great wonders, great wonders, not just wonders, great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. And so, you know, but unlike Elijah, he can't make fire consume the sacrifice. He can only make it fall from heaven, but it doesn't consume the sacrifice and God's use of fire was not to impress people that he was God it was to consume the sacrifice it's always going to point to the lamb it's always going to do that it does and we see these great things and because our minds are not right yet they're not renewed we haven't come to it we see this and we go wow you know and that's what they're going to do it says they're going to be deceived by reason of, oh wow he must be of God. He's making fire fall from heaven just like the prophets did. You know, not just like. Their, their fire was to consume the sacrifice always. That Christ may be burned up and that the sweet savor of that would rise to God. Not just showing off. <clears throat> um, and then in Luke 9, 53 through 56, the disciples did not know what spirit they were of either. Remember, they said the, the, they were going through Samaria and the Samaritans wouldn't receive him because he set his face as though he would go to Jerusalem. And James and John said, shall we call down fire upon them? That is a complete wrong that's an abuse of fire and that's an, an, a lack of understanding that's the worldly way of seeing it always our minds are filled with everything wrong uh, we have to be renewed in the spirit of our mind the whole spirit of and Jesus said to them you don't know what spirit you are of he didn't say well that's 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 wrong to teach it. You know, that, your doctrines aren't right yet. He said, your spirit isn't anything like mine. You're burning up people that didn't receive me. I die. I get burned up. I will be consumed for those very ones. Will they ultimately win? Talking about the beast because of their power and all the things they can do. Every action taken against those who are lambs are signing their death warrant. Every action that the beasts take against lambs. Now, this isn't against killing anybody. Lambs release this spirit. How do I say? It's the power of God. And lambs release that. You know, and it says that. What is, this, what is the wisdom and power of God? Christ crucified. And lambs re release that. And that's why it's effective that he that liveth by the sword shall die by the sword. So will they ultimately win? Every action taken against those who are lambs are signing their own death warrant. Compare Revelation 13, 9 through 10. Death is not your enemy, but is your power. Be patient. They will eventually destroy themselves. For us to, I'm using this word, I'm sure it's not even a word. I use the word unseenness. It's the same concept as hiddenness. For us to live in unseenness will require a death to our being prominent. To live in unseenness will require death, a death dying to our need to be prominent. 
um, that's going to take a death. You, you can you can humble you can you can submit self. Um, you know, for example, <clears throat> you, we use the example of Israel taking the promised land, and God says, go in there and, and kill them all and stuff, you know? And so, well, that's our flesh. That's us. That's our flesh. <clears throat> and uh, so you have the example of, uh, it wasn't the Jebusites. I can't remember who it was right now. Anyway, one group that acts like that they come a long way and they're not really living in the land and and so they, so Joshua and them allow, did you say who it was? Gibeonites, it was the Gibeonites. <clears throat> uh, and so um, they don't, they make a covenant with them. We're not going to kill you and everything, but we will make you carry water for us and chop wood and all this. We're going to make our flesh subservient. So what is, see, that doesn't, that still doesn't look as bad to us until <clears throat> it's Saul allowing uh, the Amalekites and the king whatever his face was to live and, you know, and to realize you're, all you're doing is making it some subservient and you think that's good to me because, you know, you think I want a certain tenor and a certain way and a certain thing humble and all this kind of stuff and I want you dead and I want Christ as your life. I want to see Jesus live this spirit and unseenness and hiddenness through you. And I, and I want to test you with circumstances that will make you look bad or make you, you know, whatever, uh, so that we can find out, do you love my son? Is it my son you want? Or is it that you're trying to play the religious game and fool everybody? You're only fooling yourself because God's not fool. <clears throat> So for us to live in unseenness will require a death to our being prominent and to our seeking to gain some righteousness of our own. You know, I want people to see, you know, I want people to see me as uh, deep and spiritual and that, you know, I really know the Lord and all this kind of stuff. And, you know, I'll tell you what. That kind of stuff is not going to just come out of you by prayer and fasting. Even. That comes out by death. It does. It comes out by death. You have to be drugged through stuff. See, Jesus made himself of no reputation. I don't believe we will do that. I believe we have to be drugged through situations that just literally rip our reputation out out of our fiber and you know and maybe that's not true of everybody but it was it's true of me and just literally rip it all out and hang it up on a big wall called the internet <laughs> you know and then and then go you know anybody who ever looks up your name this is what they're gonna find and go you know what I, I want to be content with that and I wasn't for a while and then I one day I realized this is the Lord this is the Lord. This is not the devil. This is not, this is not the worst thing ever happened to me. The worst thing that would ever happen to me is for me to deny the Lord in this. That would be the worst. I want to be with you, Lord. And then I just started rejoicing in it. And, and now, I mean, now I read stuff and I just go, thank you, Lord. That's good. That's good. I, this, is, this one's written better than the last one. <laughs> <laughs> And, uh, but, but there's a, there's a wrestling, there's a wrestling that goes on and you have to wrestle through unto the Lord and you have to want the Lord more than you want your reputation or whatever it is, you know, cause reputation is just one area. Second <clears throat> uh, Corinthians four twelve shows us the pro process. So then so then, you get it? So then, death is at work in us. You know, this da 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 da. So then, death works in us. Isn't that beautiful? Death is our image. Death is our righteousness. Death is our stature. Death is our abilities. We learn to function by means of death for Christ's sake and for others. I have a 
scripture that I usually put these in in advance and I didn't. And it might have been one of my NIV scriptures. Blessed is the man whose strength is in thee. See, David doesn't write stuff for people. He talks to the Lord. See, he doesn't say, blessed is the man whose strength is in the Lord. I mean, you know, maybe he does say that something, but, I, but here he says, blessed is the man whose strength is in thee, in whose heart are the ways it says of them, but really in truth, it is those two are added words, or the ways. This is uh, Psalm 84, verse 5. And 6. Who, passing through the valley of Baca, make it a well. The rain also filleth the pools, and the valley of Baca is the valley of weeping. And, they, and they're weeping and they're going through trials, but they're with the Lord and they're finding him as their strength even though they are weak because you can, be, you can be strong and weak at the same time. You can be strong in the Lord and totally weak in yourself. We think we have to be strong. And strong in the Lord means the same thing to us. But strong in the Lord means we're weak in ourselves and we admit that. And that's where we get that strength from. That's where it's going to come from. Yeah. So therefore, passing through the valley of tears, make it a well. Make it a well. We're turning this into a place where others can come and drink from. And all the tears that we went through are being saved for others and are going to benefit someone else, not just us. And then verse 7, they go from strength to strength. Every one of them in Zion appeareth before God. Appearing before God. Every one of them. Everybody who takes this path. Everybody who passes through the valley of Baca in this spirit. <clears throat> so I wrote... Um, Psalm 84, verse 5 through 7 sets forth this same reality. A death has happened, and now our strength is in our husband, the Lamb. We are blessed because of this and because we have set our hearts on pilgrimage of going up to Jerusalem where the ark resides. See, this is David. This is David. This is so the way that David is where the ark resides. We live, it, we live it in daily things, but go up regularly to draw from those wells. <clears throat> those wells for former tears uh, but that we've passed through will help us to go from strength to strength and we go up regularly and we still draw from those same wells to strengthen us through these, these times and these valleys and these, this period of Baca of tears. We pass through the valley of Baca, meaning we go through sorrows and sufferings based upon his selflessness at work through us. These tears become wells for others as we comfort them with the same comfort wherewith we are comforted. Second Corinthians, first chapter. <clears throat> we go from our strength to his. We go from strength to strength. We go from our strength to his continually until, until, until we all appear before the Lord in Zion. Glory to God. <laughs> all right. We're going to quit a little bit early. Father, just be blessed that your son is everything and that we desire that. <clears throat> you, you explained to your disciples that greatness wasn't someone who appeared great to men or appeared great in the earth but the one that was willing to be least of all and by being that was in your spirit instead of being seen and known 
as close to you. We might even appear far from you. We might even appear as though we're not even with you, and yet we, uh, we appear that way because we don't push ourselves forward and demand that people hear or see us. And Lord, you talk about it in the Song of Solomon and how she that is your bride is hidden in you and will be found there and it's a thing of your heart, not the world's heart. You're not raising up the bride first and foremost for everyone else's eyes. You're doing it for your eyes and for your heart. And that's all that should matter. That's all that should be important to us. We shouldn't be clawing or fighting or upset that somebody didn't acknowledge us or didn't put us in a higher place. We should be glad to take the, the king's seat, Father. We should be honored that you would have arranged circumstances where enemies and beasts would help us actually gain the king's seat. We thank you. We give you all the glory, and there's no glory from our side. We give you, Jesus, Lamb of God, all glory in your name. Amen. All right, we're dismissed.